Did you know that if you click on this button and then on this tab, you can buy a small land for only 100 berry. You can add 4 soil plots, decorate it and place a maximum of 1 industry on it. Don't be fooled by its small size, because you can create some amazing looking lands. Whoa, they look beautiful, but why would I want to own a bigger and more expensive land? Oh, you mean one of those 5000 NFT farmlands right here? This question gets asked a lot, so let me explain you in this video what the benefits are of owning your own Pixels farmland. Make sure to use the chapters below so you can skip to the part that is the most interesting for you. Owning a NFT farmland grants you a lot of perks in the game. You have full control over your own farmland, you can decorate it the way you want it and build the industries you need. But there is more. When you own a land it will appear right here in this tab. This way you can instantly travel to your own land and you don't need to use the infinity portal every time. You also get an extra bookmark slot on this tab right here. Normal users are only able to have 3 bookmarks, but when you own a land you can have 4. Another cool bonus is that you can get an extra row in your inventory. This allows you to hold 6 extra items. And yes, all of this stacks with the bonuses you get from the Pixel VIP membership. And besides that, Every landowner gets access to the basement of the plot store. Down here you can find the quantum recombination machine. This machine lets you build special items. And since only landowners can access this machine, other players have to buy those items on the marketplace and you can set the price. This could lead to profitable deals for you. But one of the most wonderful things you can enjoy as a landowner is the surplus you get from everyone who uses your land. Let's see how this works. 1% of every item you harvest or collect goes to the landowner. But don't worry, as a farmer you will always get the full 100% of the items you have collected. The game itself provides the 1% bonus. This only applies to the raw materials and crops. That means from everything that is planted on your field, falls out of a tree or comes out of a mine, apiary, slug hutch or a chicken coop, you can get a 1% bonus. If you need a recipe book like for the windmill, woodworking bench, the kiln, textiler or a barbecue then you cannot get a surplus from this. Ok let's continue with some other perks. You can place storage boxes on your own land. This is handy if you run out of inventory space. Only you as a landowner can access these boxes. And also when you own a farmland you can trade with other players without limits. When you don't have a VIP membership or a NFT farmland you have a monthly trade limit. The same goes for withdrawal and deposit of the in-game tokens. There is no limit when you are a landowner. The last important reason to own a land is that your land will count as a multiplier for the amount of pixel tokens you receive. At the time of recording the pixel token is not out yet so I have no idea how this will work. But basically the more lands you own the more pixel tokens you will receive. One other thing to consider is that each land has its own experience points per industry. You can check the stats when you click on the gate at the entrance. The more an industry gets used the higher the land level is. There is no utility for these stats yet but that might change in the future since it is recorded for some reason. Oh cool, thank you. So how about the different farms and its utility? So when you look at the artwork of the land the thing that stand out the most is the color of the background. This color is associated with the environment of the farm. The green color is called a land farm. The blue color is called a water farm. And the purple color is called a space farm. Also inside the game itself you can see the grass has different colors which represents the three different farm types. A grass farm is the most common and a space farm is the rarest of the three. I will tell you what the utility of these environments are, but first I want to cover all other traits. Let's start with the coop. The coop is where you can place your chickens so you can collect different types of eggs. A little under half of all farms have a coop. Note that you can get a surplus from all egg types when they are being collected. Next there are two different houses, a small house and a large house. At this moment the only difference between the two is the looks on the outside 
and the size on the inside. With a large house you get twice the space to decorate it with items. A farm can have a windmill or no windmill. With a windmill you can grind stuff up. You can make flour, construction powder and other variable stuff. The size of the farm itself plays a big role. It is obvious that a large size gives you more room to decorate but a more important difference is that a small farm can only have a maximum of 48 plots to grow your crops on while a large farm can have up to 60 plots which is 25% more. On a small farm you can only place 3 industries and on a large farm you can have one more so a total of 4 industries. It doesn't really matter if the industries are different or if they are all the same and it is good to know that the coop and the windmill don't count as an industry. Ok, there is one more important feature tied to the land size and for that I have to introduce the next trait and that is the tree density. When you chop down your trees you can get softwood, hardwood and the rare sap. Your farm NFT can have the no trees density, a light amount of trees or a dense amount of trees. What farm size you have and what tree density you have will determine how many trees you get on your land. Obviously no trees will give you zero trees. But a small farm with a light tree density will have 12 trees. A small farm with dense trees will have 24 trees. A large farm with a light density will also give you 24 trees. And if you want the max amount of trees on your land, make sure you have a large farm with dense trees. This will give you 36 trees. And what about the resources I collect from the trees? Can I find them in my silo? Yes, the items will end up in your silo. And that is the next trait I'm going to talk about. A silo is this building right here. There are farms with a silo or farms without a silo. You can find the surplus or the bonus crops right here in this bunker. When you have a silo on your land you get double the storage space. This is very handy if you have a popular farm because it gives you more room to collect different items. Please note you can only take items out of the silo and you cannot add anything to it. However you can move things around to organize it. Now let's get back to the different farm types. You now know there is a land, a water and a space type. Each type or environment has its own unique utility. On the most common land type you can get clay from mines, but only if you are mining level 2. On a water type farm you can collect salt blocks from the mines, just make sure you are mining level 5. And also the special water mint crop can only be planted on a water farm. Also the space farms have unique utility. If you are looking for the rare Voidonium, know that you can only get it from a mine on a space farm. And for that you need to be mining level 10. The special Astro Cactus crop can only be planted on a spaceland and not on the other two environments. I want to end this chapter with one important thing. You cannot add or remove any of the NFT traits. There is no way to add extra trees or an extra chicken coop. That means that if for example you want a land with a coop, you have to make sure you buy a NFT farm with the coop trait. Oh, and one more bonus. If you use a rarity checker, or you use the secondary market blur, please note that rarity doesn't mean anything here. Here have a look, this land is pretty rare, but it has no useful traits. So in game it won't be so nice to have. Right now you know everything there is to know about the different farmlands and their utility. Wow, thank you! And how do I buy a NFT farmland? Inside the game you can easily click on this land icon right here and you can go to this tab. Here you can go to OpenSea, the NFT marketplace with the highest volume. Find a land you like and click on buy now or place an offer. If you want to see how your land looks like before you buy it, you can always visit the land by using the same number in the Infini portal. Sometimes the land has been stripped from its soy plots or other items, so make sure you know what you buy. You will get a confirmation when the transfer is complete, but sometimes it takes a while for it to appear in the game. If you want to speed up that progress, visit the land again and click on the gate at the entrance and then on the claim button. Thank you, I just received my land. Now, 
How do I decorate my lens? You can make your lens look nice by using the mover and the remover tool. The red mover tool lets you pick up items and move it around the farm. The blue remover tool will remove the decoration from your lens and place it in your inventory. This way you can sell or trade it or place it on a different lens. Be careful though not to use the blue remover tool on these small grass types. I think it is a bug and when you do it will delete them from the game. So make sure to only move them around with the red mover tool. I hope this bug gets fixed soon. You can buy more soil plots at Hazel's shop and you can build different industries with the blueprints at the Ministry of Innovation. Some decorations can be made at a woodworking bench, a kiln or a textile mill. Other decorations can be bought at the post office or at Jerome who can be found northeast of the city center. A relatively new feature in the game is user generated content. You as a player can build your own decorations and sell them on the market. If you want to buy other people's pixel art, you can do so at this buy market stand. And here is a pro tip from fellow YouTuber Legion. You can place a storage chest next to an industry to store relevant materials in it. For example, I can place a chest right here next to this woodworking bench to store wood and other related items. And next to this textile mill, I can place one for all my silk fiber, my slime and other stuff. Alright, thank you. What more do I need to know? Well, let me tell you about the different farm roles. You can give other players access to your farm, click on the gate at the entrance and go to settings. By the way, this is also where you can change the name of your land. As for the different roles, you need the wallet address of the other player, you need to paste it right here and then select the role you would like to give. Right now, I am on a land that is not mine and I have the builder role. As you can see, I can move things around with the red mover tool and I can also place decoration on this land. But I cannot remove them. Right now, I have the manager role. I can also remove items with the blue remover tool. And yes, I can also remove industries and soil plots. I can also access the silo. So make sure you give the manager role to someone you trust. The funny thing is, when you go inside the house, you can't do anything here. The farm manager can also access the settings, change the name and manage other player roles. Alright, there is a chance that the three different land types play a big role in the upcoming pets. If so, I will explain this in my new video right here. Make sure to subscribe so you won't miss anything. And thank you for sticking to the end.